TLO, what's poppin'? We are on Twitch. We are not, not live. So that means we are live. But by the time you see this, we won't be live. So just leave a like, comment, subscribe. Turn on your post notification bells. Let's continue to grow the family from Chicago to the UK and all around the world because this is gang warfare in Sweden. Okay. Um, don't forget to follow the Discord. A lot of things will be popping off in here very, very, very soon. Don't forget, we do have a Patreon where we watch things we cannot watch on YouTube on here. Link is down in the description to all of these things I am mentioning. And don't forget, we do got the Lit One Live. Like now, we are live. The things that we miss in between videos, like these shorts, these are from lives. So follow it if you can, man. Let's get into this, man. This is what you came for, I think. Let's watch. The Mix. I'm already subscribed to The Mix. Okay. I, I might have watched something. Yeah, I did watch something from it. All right, but... Sweden is suffering from a shooting epidemic. Last year, violence driven by drug trafficking resulted in more than 340 incidents involving firearms, without even counting multiple... Isn't Anir from here, right? Anir is from Sweden, right? Hold on. I think, right? Yeah, ah, oh, yeah, okay, cool. Bomb attacks. In total, there were almost 50 deaths, most of which, which were linked to organized crime. A surge in gun crime here and nationwide has made Sweden one of the worst countries in Europe for gangland shootings. This Scandinavian country has gone from having the lowest rate of gun violence to one of the highest on the continent in less than a decade. And this year, a new record is on the way. The violence is mainly the result of score-settling accounts between gangs in the three main areas of the country. However, it is in the south, in Malmö, that a clan war has shaken Sweden and has spread beyond its borders to Spain and England. This is... To understand it all, let's go back a decade to when one of the major gang wars in Malmö, involving two rival criminal networks, took place. Faction M, led by Mizra Masovic, and Faction K, K, led by Valdet Cooper, both rose through the ranks of local organized crime without major conflict until a shootout in August 2009, in which Mertes, 23 years old, and Mirza's brother died. Then it was the turn of Mevla, Valdet Cooper's brother, to succumb to bullets in retaliation. This will trigger an all out war in the underworld with revenge attacks described as inevitable by the police. Numerous incidents linked to the two factions will be recorded for years, with finally Ashkan Abedi shot dead in a shopping centre car park in January 2015. His brother Amin was convicted of the Mertes murder. As time passed, the storm passed, and the two respective leaders faded from the criminal landscape into the shadows. However, one of the leaders of the faction M, Nermin K, continued to manage his criminal activities by governing the younger ones. In 2015, Nermin told the court that he had made peace with his former enemies and that there was no threat to him. However, he was subsequently murdered in late February 2016. Den 30-åriga mannen som sköts till dödsnatten mot måndag var ett känt namn i Malmös undre värld. Han tillhörde ett... He was a part of the close-knit group of friends, uh, the so-called Faction M, which has been described as a very dangerous by the police. Sammansvetsat kompisgäng, den så kallade M-falangen, som stämplats som extremt farliga av polisens mordutredare. 30... 
The 30-year-old said to have played a leading role in the gang. Suspicions turned to a long list of suspects, including a bunch of guys from the Sevad neighborhood in Sofilund. Including a bunch of guys from the Sevad neighborhood in Sofilund. Nevertheless, the murder still remains unsolved. In Wait, any like till this this was published in 2020. Okay, yeah. So two years ago, so it's still unsolved? Case it was at this point that Amir Meki, together with his Seved crew, took the opportunity to make his criminal peak. Amir, despite his young age, has climbed rapidly in the hierarchy of the faction M, which will make him a central element in these new redistributions of cards. Thus the group around Meki, which is also linked to the Rosengard district, will be the main suspect cited in the next eliminations of people linked to the faction K. But also, other youngsters from the neighborhoods are involved in drug trafficking, including a tragic story of a trio of brothers called M. The first to be murdered was Akram. The day before his funeral, his brother Maysam receives a visit from his best friend Mome, who has a proposition to make to him from another criminal linked to Ahmad Jawad. The latter wants to eliminate Maysem's friend, nicknamed Jazz, and Maysem could lead him into an ambush in exchange for money. So mommy was playing the middleman for a back door for the ops. Being the middleman in this situation, starting on the fence is a bad move, no matter what. Playing both sides is a terrible move in any in any facet of life. Not just in the, in this scenario, politically, financially, at a job, friends. It's a bad move. Okay. But instead of putting blood on his conscience, Mason decided to warn Jazz about the potential contract. That was real one, real one placed on his head. Jazz temporarily escapes. Soon after, Mome makes a regular appointment with his friend Mesa. The two leave for the Dan Sorgatan district. Once parked, Mome gets out of the car and tells Mesa that he will be right back after selling drugs to a customer. I'm already peeping where this is headed. Mame couldn't connect the back door, so he took out the desk. Maysem sees him drive away in his rearview mirror. After a few seconds, gunfire breaks out. Someone else shoots at the car from behind. The gunman then moves forward closer to the car and continues shooting. Någon kommer här bakifrån. Someone comes from behind and shoots the car. A 25-year-old man is sitting in the car who suffers seriously. Skjuter mot bilen och mot 25-åringen som sitter i bilen och blir allvarligt skadad. Maysem is trapped under bullets but survives thanks to his bulletproof vest. It turns out that Maysem's best friend Mome had also set him up because he had been promised money to sell his friend. He will be sentenced to 12 years in prison for complicity. He will be sentenced. So this is my question. May some, why did he remain homeboys with Mame, Mommy, Mommy, after he, he tried to set up this back door, right? And he went and told the person, why would he remain friends in this? to 12 years in prison for complicity. Mannen överlever den här allvarliga skit. The man survived the intense shooting and during the trial against his best friend, it is revealed that the latter had sold him out. Utningen. Och i rättegången och åtalet mot den bästa kompisen så framkommer det att han har sålt ut sin vän. It has become a real business in Malmö. Indeed, Mesa had noticed that it was enough to take a friend to a certain place 
where killers could execute him for about 20,000 euros. This phenomena of selling a friend has occurred in several murder investigations in the city, because as police officer Jonas Karlberg confirms, loyalties have become looser in recent years, and the structures between criminal groups have been unstable since 2016. And according to Pa Anderson, there's no honor among thieves, and there's no loyalty in these games, man. Money, money is king. Cash is king. That's why you know civilians stay civilians and stay out the way, and you know what I'm saying, go to school or pick up a camera and be a YouTuber, or or whatever you want to do. But just know, ain't no friends in this. The gangster murders in Malma are mostly contract killings, otherwise they would not have happened. Continuing the story, the day after the failed Maysem hit, the main mission will be completed with the assassination of Jazz in Rosengard, when the killers surprise him from behind. But this is not the first time the 23-year-old has appeared in the case. Indeed, he was also the first witness at the scene after a shooting of a 16-year-old boy in January 2017 in Rosengard. He had noticed that the kid was wearing the same jacket as him. That is why Jazz had told the police that he thought the boy had been shot by mistake and that he was the one the killers were looking for. Now, according to all accounts, the 23-year-old was the real target of homicide. However, Jazz was not spared and Salam Shabani was sentenced to life imprisonment among others, for having ordered the murder. Salam Shebani, 29 år, även känd som El Patron, har åtalats för att ha beställt mord i Malmö. Salam Shebani, 29, also known as El Patron, was prosecuted for ordering the ordering a hit in the criminal world of Malmö. Hans undre värld, och idag föll domen. Today, Salam Shebani döms. Down. Salam Shebani is sentenced to life imprisonment for incitement to. M and attempted M as well as money laundering. Till livstids fängelse för ett fall av anstiftan till mord samt försök till mord och grovt penningtvättsbrott. Han var länge internationellt efterlyst innan. God dang. He was wanted internationally where he was arrested in Spain including travel to Dubai where he was where he has banking contacts. Han kunde gripas i Spanien och han har bland annat vistats i Dubai där han har bankkontakter. Jawad, the shooter, got 18 years. The reason for this act is said to be a jealousy drama over a woman. Indeed, oh Salam... God. Oh my God. It don't matter where you are in the world, man. That's, that's always top reason. ...was allegedly dating Jazz's ex-girlfriend. As time went on, the conflict escalated, with other factors causing the situation to get worse. Let's go back to Maysem's story. A few days after his assassination attempt, he is visited by a childhood friend connected to Sevet's team, who offers him money to keep quiet about who was behind the executions. However, the money is not comparable to what his brother Akram's life was worth, so he decides not to keep silent. In reaction to this, in the summer of 2017, someone fired an automatic weapon at his mother's flat in Rosengard. And finally, the third brother was murdered on 14th of January 2018 in the street. Several get crazy and sweet like this. this criminal groups in the city have merged their forces into a temporary alliance with the sole aim of fighting Amir's network and taking control of the drug trade in the whole south. At the head of old ops with my new ops, oh man. The new alliance would be Daniel Petrovsky, nicknamed Danny Jude, suspected of being one of Sweden's biggest international drug smugglers. The reason I put Legion on a license plate at Lamborghini? <laughs> no one guarantee you cares. 
It all started with a kidnapping in 2018. Det är den 7 juni 2018. En ung man kidnappas på Eriksdalsgatan i närheten av Värn. Uh, it is June 7, 2018. A young man is kidnapped at Eriksdalsgatan near Varshem in Malmö. Varshem i Malmö. It is an individual from Danny's family. The latter reappeared after a few days remaining silent in front of the police. Polisen som den blodiga våldsspiralen. According to the police this is where the spiral of the violence in Malmö startar. In response, one of the worst gang shootings in Sweden takes place. Jan, tre personer. Three people were shot in the internet were shot. Y'all see it now. It says three people behind me. Three people were. Och i all på ett internetcafé på Drottninggatan. Kulorna från en Kalashnikov. The bullets träffar sammanlagt sex personer. The main target of this revenge. They not they not hitting with little stuff too. They hitting with Kalashnikovs. Jamia Mackey miraculously survived the drive-by. Faced with a considerable threat. He decides to flee with part of his gang to Spain. To Spain. However, the way everybody flees to Spain because I think the extradition laws, right? That's it. The violence will continue on Swedish soil between the two networks. Sam Ho is a former high-ranking gang member in Malmo. Now he works with young people to try and keep them out of criminal gangs. We meet in Varnhem, scene of a triple murder in 2018 and where there was another deadly shooting last week. Young gang members don't realize what they are getting into, but things escalate quickly. They don't have trust in the authorities and they don't have other opportunities. Study, wait for a good job. They don't have patience for that. It's fast money that counts. As the criminals have pointed out, all hell is about to break loose and it's best to stay home as innocent people may be affected. Then come the various murders connected to the two respective teams, with finally the murder of a young mother. Linked to Danny and linked to Mekki. Mekki is orange and Danny is blue. Mother named Carolyn Hakim, which has shaken public opinion in Sweden. It was around 10 a.m. in on a Monday in Malmo when Caroline Hakim. Hakim 31 was shot. Oh, y'all see it from here. In Malmö, när 31-åriga Caroline Hakim skjuts ihjäl framför ögonen på chockade Malmöbor. I famnen bär hon sitt nyfödda barn. She was carrying her newborn baby in her arms. Wow. Caroline was in the company of her husband, Naif Adawi, who was holding their two-month-old baby. Suddenly, Naif handed the child to his wife and started to run when he saw two men approaching. <sighs> okay. There's two things that y'all gonna say in the comments. Dang, bro, left and... <laughs> He left his wife and kid right there and ran, or he left to draw attention away from them. Who started shooting at him. He manages to escape, but Carolyn's fate is different. She collapses on the pavement after being shot in the head, and the child remains unharmed in her arms. Oh, so that was... So they intentionally did that to Carolyn because they couldn't get to him? Yeah, that's what, that's. You couldn't have made a kid on my end up for sin. If I would have known, I would have. I could have been In this him. video, the shooter can be seen fleeing the scene of the crime. Despite the passing years, the investigation is still ongoing. The real target was probably her partner, Naef, who is known to have been involved in one of the biggest robberies in Denmark. In any case, he was on the list of suspects around Danny's crew. The violent spiral continues 
with the execution of a mafia gangster in London, Flamor Bekiri. Mm. Back to the UK. Prosecutors say Flamor, shot dead outside his home, was part of the escalating violence between the two rival Swedish networks. The Albanian Swedish national was a close associate of Danny Jude and also a longtime good friend of Naef. He was therefore the direct target of Meki's organization. This assassination was meticulously planned for months, involving many individuals. For example, here, the alleged shooter, Anis Hemisi, can be seen staking out the Flamur neighborhood a few days before the attack while disguised as a street cleaner wearing a latex mask. Oh, this is deep. Yo. The situation in Sweden is being driven by drugs and money in a totally different way to how it used to be. And finally, let's go back to the Meki crew, who, fleeing the bloody war in Sweden, continued their criminal practices in the south of Spain, in the Costa del Sol. It was there that they earned their reputation as one of the most violent groups ever to ravage the tourist paradise known as Los Suecos by the media. This is a network of Swedish hitmen led by Amir Meki and his brother Fakhri. In May 2018, they executed David Avila Ramos, also known as Maradona, when a man on a scooter shot him. Maradona was a notorious drug dealer who was allegedly killed because of a huge debt to suppliers. The next target would be another Moroccan trafficker named El Zocato. The latter had collaborated with Meki before, but it seems that a dispute over payment for their services had arisen. We will now show you a sequence of an execution in Maribel. It is very hard to watch and we will not be participating in it on this channel. What I'm going to do is show you all this. <laughs> de una ejecución en plena calle ha sucedido en Marbella y es una escena muy dura se lo advertimos indeed a oh, okay all right they ain't even showed it. They... few hours after their meeting okay maybe they are showing it hold on can't take no chances out here in the port of Marbella Zocato was about to leave his luxury villa when a man wearing a balaclava was waiting for him at his home to kill him before fleeing on his bicycle Oh, they just showed they just showed him running up they cut the scene and then they showed him fleeing on the bicycle and then a commercial came okay i just had a hey listen y'all already know so this mistake is costing amazon prime shoppers i don't see the skip button okay this this is a long commercial buddy It was the close cooperation of Swedish and Spanish police that helped solve these incidents and find the gang members. On 30th of November 2018, the Spanish police carried out several raids on luxury properties where the Swedes lived. In total, nine of them were arrested jointly in Malaga and Malmö. However, Amir Meki escaped this arrest by going on the run again a few weeks before. The boy elusive. In the other two cases described by the police as contract, y'all see it. Where a group of Malmos and suspected of, you see it, uh, and the word connection with En liga från Malmö ska utpekas för att ha mördat två olika personer inom droghandeln på uppdrag av annan. The hunt for Mackie had been a central objective of the Swedish police for years. The police had been secretly monitoring the operations of his network. They suspected that Mackie was running an organization that supplied Sweden with drugs from Spain. The idea was to kill two birds with one stone 
and stop both the drug trade and the leader. This was a difficult task to achieve, given the limited evidence available against the leader. I ain't even gonna lie, I feel like this, we've been watching this for two hours, haven't we? Finally, one element was added to the investigation. It was the trapped drivers who used a secret transshipment center in Malmo that allowed drugs to be transported to the rest of the country. However, the operation to prosecute the smuggling leader was unsuccessful as the convicts remained silent. What is clear is that police efforts were in full swing, but there was no evidence to pursue the leader of the gang until the Spanish police revealed that they were tracking the same group in Spain. Thus, their collaboration helped to shake up the network. Fine. When countries get to collab, and that's when you really know <laughs> it's over with. What's that? What's that? What's that agency call when when they do overseas and whatnot? Um, dang, see what's it called? I can't even think right now because it's eleven a.m. Um, what's the one? It's one person in here, man. What's what's the what's it? What is it when the agencies from overseas come get you? What's that agent? I don't. Y'all tell me. Finally, after a year and a half on the run. Amir will be caught in Dubai in June 2020. The choice of Dubai is not surprising, as he was apparently linked to one of the most wanted traffickers in the Netherlands at that time, Ridouan Tahi. Their two organizations had already collaborated in Spain. Fi Interpol. Interpol. There we go. Finally, the police revealed this bloody spiral of revenge on Swedish soil between the group around Mackie and Danny Jude. Thanks to Ancro Chat's decryption, 15 members of Danny's team are accused of, among other things, several preparations for murder. Indeed, the police prevented at least five executions of the rival team. Finally, after this year's trial, 13 out of 15 members were convicted. It now remains to be seen what the next step will be in all these rivalries in the Malamoa underworld. I ain't gonna hold you. That was some crazy stuff. I'm glad I watched that one. I watched that for, um, you know, just to educate myself on world events. Tell leave a like, comment, subscribe, turn on your post. I'm gone.